Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for a video which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, the short story read-along playlist, but number two, we are going short story by short story through Dubliners by James Joyce. This is eight of 15 in that series. Uh, this short story is called A Little Cloud, and we're going to start with a recap of the short story. Then we're going to go in the lit crit part of the video, and then we'll have some writer's notes at the end, a writer's corner, if you will, things that I think writers can learn from this short story. So what happened here? Well, uh, we have, and pardon me, guys, because the names here, I had to go back and change them in my notes several times. I kept getting Chandler and Gallagher backwards as to which character was which. So Tommy Chandler's well-to-do friend, Ignatius Gallagher, uh, moved away to London nearly a decade ago. And Gallagher has invited Chandler out upon Gallagher's return to town. They're going to go to a high-scale bar in Chandler's town to which Chandler has never gone. But Gallagher has... Gallagher, pardon me. Uh, so Chandler is sort of a quaint fellow. But Gallagher has made a name at the London Press. They meet up at the bar, and Gallagher is acting quite the worldly fellow, don't you know? And that's fine until we get this. Uh, he, speaking of Chandler, was beginning to feel somewhat disillusioned. Gallagher's accent and way of expressing himself did not please him. There was something vulgar in his friend which ha he had not observed before. But perhaps it was only the result of living in London amid the bustle and competition of the press. The old personal charm was still there under this new gaudy manner. And, after all, Gallagher had lived. He had seen the world. Little Chandler looked at his friend Enviously, Chandler is then set on closing himself off to the conversation in bitterness until Gallagher asks his friend about his family. Gallagher says, I heard you got hitched and asks about the baby as well. And Chandler just keeps on a blushing and he tells of his wife and his son. Then Opening back up to the experience, Chandler decides he wants to invite Gallagher back to his house. Spend the night with us, with me and my wife, and meet my son, basically is what he says. Um, Gallagher says it's too bad that he is so late in his trip, because this is his final night, and he's already planned a card game with the boys. He, was, uh, he had uh, made that commitment earlier, and they agree that he will, that Gallagher will come back the year following, and when he does, he will spend a night with Chandler. Then we get this. He felt so acutely, uh, this is Chandler, felt acutely the contrast between his own life and his friends, and it seemed to him unjust. Gallagher was his inferior in birth and education. He was sure that he could do something better than his friend had ever done or could ever do, something higher than, their, than mere tawdry journalism. If he only got the chance, what was th what was it that stood in his way? His unfortunate timidity. He wished to vindicate himself in some way to assert his manhood. He saw behind Gallagher's refusal of his invitation. Gallagher was only patronizing him by his friendliness, just as he was patronizing Ireland by his visit. 
Chandler then suggests that maybe next year there will be a Mrs. Gallagher, but Gallagher insists that he'll only marry for money, something that does not seem to Chandler, or I, I think it is set up in the story to not seem to the readers very manly. Uh, where am I at here? Sorry. Uh, then we cut to Chandler at home with his wife. His wife is angry at him, and he is handed the baby, and all he has to do is keep the baby quiet. Just keep the baby quiet. And he finds himself studying a picture of his wife, and he comes to this conclusion. Why had he married the eyes in the photograph? He caught himself up at the question and glanced nervously round the room. He found something mean in the pretty furniture which he had bought for his house on the hire system. Annie had chosen it herself and reminded him of her and it reminded him of her. It it too was prim and pretty. A dull resentment against his life awoke within him. Could he not escape from his little house? Was it too late for him to try to live bravely like Gallagher? Could he go to London? There was the furniture still to be paid for. If he could only write a book and get it published, that might open the way for him. Then, after this, shortly after this, he makes the baby cry. And then he gets frustrated and yells at the baby. What a manly thing to do. Then the wife bursts in and belittles him. Then he cries in shame. So that is the recap of the story. Uh, it is an interesting sort of story and not one that I really expected to get in this collection. Wow, this is a it's a relatively long short story for um, James Joyce. Oh no, nope. I'm an idiot. <clears throat> now, with the lit crit portion of this thing, I've got three things to talk about, and the first one is here. He remembered the books of poetry upon his shelves at home. This is speaking of Chandler. He had bought them in his bachelor days, and many an evening, as he sat in the little room of the hall, he had been tempted to take one down from the bookshelf and read out something to his wife. But shyness had always held him back, and so the books had remained on their shelves. At times he repeated lines to himself, and this consoled him. This is a small encapsulation of the character who is Little Chandler. This timidity right here. He's married to the woman and can't even figure out a way to read her a poem. This is also reflected in the fact that Chandler has lived in this town all the while, but he's never gone to the bar which they're going, Corliss's, the bar which they're going to go to. He's never been there because he thought it was too fancy. The waiters spoke French, didn't they, or something? I, I don't know. I've never been in, he thinks to himself. He is cloistered. He is a cloistered individual. Now, that has not led to the worst life, but it has led to a life of little adventure. He has a wife. He has a son. He has these furnitures, right? He's got the furniture. He's got a decent job. He's got time off. He's doing the sort of middle class thing. Gallagher is out there living paycheck to paycheck, but doing it in a grand style. And it is the influence of Gallagher that brings this into Chandler's life. Little Chandler quickened his pace. 
For the first time in his life, he felt himself superior to the people he passed. For the first time, his soul revolted against the dull inelegance of Capel Street. There was no doubt about it. If you wanted to succeed, you had to go away. So here we have uh, Chandler placing the blame for the boring nature of his life in the fact that he has never left Dublin. He has stayed there and therefore could not achieve anything. But he has achieved something. He has become what appears to me to be, I mean, maybe I'm reading things from Ireland 100 years ago wrong. This seems to me to be a very uppity, or not uppity, but a very decent middle class life that Chandler has created for himself. That seems to be what's going on there. But we end this story with Chandler being very upset at his life, with Chandler being very, feeling very underappreciated in his life, with Chandler feeling regret for the life that he has led. We leave this story, and look, at the end of this story, we can understand that, right? He's in this room with this woman. Maybe he doesn't love. He's got this furniture he's still got to pay for, this screaming baby. All he wants to do is maybe write. He thinks he's a writer. Maybe he's not. He could be, though, don't you think? And he feels trapped. He's cloistered himself into this life, and then he feels trapped by it. And we are, I think, very much led to believe that, yeah, that's the right call. I think we are very much led to believe in the narrative of the story. Yeah, this guy's kind of trapped. He uh, set himself up in this way, and he's taking it on the chin now. He's taking it on the chin now. 32 years old, I think he was in the story. Ooh, all downhill from there. But here's the interesting part from the literary side of things. Literary, how do we bring this into our own lives? Yeah, we can look at Chandler's life and say, yeah, that's, yeah, it's not for me, man. That would be awful. Find yourself with a woman that you don't love, seems to not love you, got all this debt built up, you got a child now, you've got a raise, uh, and all you want, all you want to do is write, you think, kind of you think. This is this is the, the danger of being a part-time savage, right? He hasn't set aside any time to write. He hasn't dedicated himself to this craft, Chandler has not. But he's pretty sure in his head he can he can do this, right? I mean, how hard is it to write? right? How hard would it be to, to get a get a book out there? No, I, I think that Chandler, or that Chandler as well makes his living in words. From the, from the reading I did, I think they both, he has a similar job to Gallagher, but in his town. But that, that's not the same, right? That's not the same thing as writing a book of poetry that will make you independently wealthy. So that's part of the, the danger of life. A lot of people think, oh, yeah, I could do this thing. I'm going to quit my job and do this thing. Well, this thing, you had to have been doing it while you had your job in order to build a base. And then maybe you can support yourself. But if you go out on your own and you can't support yourself, well, there's nothing there, baby. You're on your own. So here, here's what we're led to believe, is that Chandler, in this story, he's taken the wrong route. Gallagher, baby, Gallagher's a winner. Gallagher's out there earning the bottom dollar. Gallagher's out there setting the world on fire. That's what we're led to believe. But don't you think probably somewhere out in the world, the world between Chandler and Gallagher, somewhere... Gallagher is posted up, lost and lonely. The Gallagher seems like a great big noble fella, seems like a great big genius fella, seems like a great successful man. 
until he starts talking about relationships and how we'd only marry for money, right? That that didn't seem all that well-versed. Gallagher, maybe he can throw around a little bit of a foreign language, knows a couple words of French. But when he starts talking about love, that's a totally different language. And here we have Chandler, who maybe he doesn't have love either, but he had someone dedicate themselves to him as well as he dedicated himself to her. That's a start. There can be some reclamation made there. But Chandler's on his own. Now, to get into the... Oh, I've lost everything. To get into the... Writer's Corner portion of things. We have a couple things here from Chandler. He felt them within him. He tried to weigh his soul to see if it was a poet's soul. Later on in that same paragraph, he began to invent sentences and phrases from the notice which his book would get, quote, Mr. Chandler has the gift of easy and graceful verse. A wistful sadness pervades these poems. The Celtic note. It was a pity his name was not more Irish-looking. Perhaps it would be it would be better to insert his mother's name before the surname, Thomas Malone Chandler, or better still, T. Malone Chandler. He would speak to Gallagher about it. A couple things here. Number one, I think that this is absolutely James Joyce taking a poke at uh, pretentious authors who are more concerned about what it is that critics will say about them than what it is they're putting on paper. He is already writing the blurbs to his own collections. And because those collections will be so good, so stunning, he needs to adopt a more Irish name to present them. But number two, in literary fiction, okay, so maybe you've seen the movie Scream. In the movie Scream, what they're doing is making a mockery of horror films, slasher films, because the, spoiler alert for a movie that's got to be 30 years old by now, right? Almost 30, 25 for sure. In that movie, the killers are themselves slasher film connoisseurs. A strange meta take on the genre. In the slasher genre, if someone says, and in screen they point it out, if someone says, I'll be right back, that guy's dead. In literary fiction, in literary fiction, the moment you have someone daydreaming, and I think I, I bring this up because A, I think there is a there is a corollary for every genre of fiction. B, I don't think it's just one in each of these genres of fiction. There are several things in the slasher film that if you say this, it means you're dead. Uh, and three, I think that these things can be intertwined. But in the literary genre, if you have a character daydreaming about the way that things will be and how things will get better in the literary genre, daydreaming and assuming things will get better means your story ends in chaos. And how does this story end? Then, uh, for writers, I thought this was a real good Use of words here. Little Chandler allowed his whiskey to be little Chandler allowed his whiskey to be very much diluted. You don't know what's good for you, my boy, said Ignatius Gallagher. I drink mine neat. I drink mine I drink very little as a rule, said Chandler modestly. An odd half one or so when I meet any of the old crowd, that's all. That shows us a lot about these two characters, and all it is is the two of them showing off their choice of liquor. Gallagher 
drinks his neat. Now, number one, that means he has acquired the tongue for liquor. He doesn't have to water it down. He doesn't have to add any spritzer in. He just drinks it straight, baby. That means he's acquired the tongue for liquor, one, means that is a worldly thing to do. Number two, as a man who has had more than his share of nights drinking just straight whiskey, it's a real quick way to end up out of control. You don't know what you're doing at that point. You are gone. Right? So that tells us not only that he's worldly, but that it eventually this night is going off of the rails for Ignatius Gallagher. Chandler, little Chandler, likes his whiskey to be diluted like his life. I drink very little as a rule. He's one for rules. Drinking very little means that it will not have much of an effect over him. That is what he, he wants to be in control. Gallagher wants to be off the rails, baby. And the last thing that I have here is one of my favorite thi- I, Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is a universal in literature and I just don't catch it. This era of writing, the greats from this era, the uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ow. Uh, William Faulkner. Why can I never remember William Faulkner's name? Um, James Joyce, William Faulkner, F. Scott Fitzgerald, but especially, in my opinion, Ernest Hemingway is great at this, and I'm going to show you what this is. When they heard I was from Ireland, they were ready to eat me, man. Little Chandler took four or five sips from his glass. Tell me, he said, is it true that Paris is so... Immoral, as they say. Here's a very simple question for you here. How much time passed in those three sentences? Because it makes very little sense for these things to happen in quick succession. When I heard I was from Ireland, they were ready to eat me, man. One, two, three, four, five. Tell me, he said. Is it true in Paris there is moral as immoral as they say? That makes very little sense to happen in quick succession. How much time passes here? And here is why that matters. You have Gallagher, who has already been making Chandler angry. He's already been he's already set Chandler off. Chandler's already uneasy. He's closing himself off to the conversation. He's becoming reserved. And then Gallagher adds, when they heard I was from Ireland, they were ready to eat me, man. Yeah. Jazz age, baby. He's telling this wild story. The very measured Chandler takes a drink. Takes Three or four more drinks after that, this very calm, relaxed, me- or not relaxed, but calm, measured, maybe not even calm, this very retentive, measured individual who does not drink much as a practice has taken the time to take four or five sips from his glass. That's a lot of time. Time enough for him to have eased his way back into the conversation through morbid curiosity. Tell me, is it true that Paris is so immoral, as they say? That is, that is how much time takes place there. Uh, that is all I have for this discussion. A little cloud by James Joyce, the eighth of a 15-part series. This is in both the Dubliners playlist as well as the short story read-along or the short story discussion playlist here on the channel. 
Uh, if you enjoy or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out on the channel as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more. Uh, because there is literature to be had on this channel, and I hope to have you back for the next one.